Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Small School District Association Virtual College Fair, and thank you for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen at any time to type questions to our presenters. Your camera and microphone are both off, so our panelists cannot see nor hear you. This is just one of many different sessions being offered, so be sure to sign up for more. And this presentation will be recorded and will be available in about a week at stripescan.com backslash SSDA. Thank you, and I will love to turn it over to our first presenter from Fairleigh Dickinson University. Thank you so much. Give me one second. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, so my name is Megan Troy and I'm an undergraduate admissions counselor for Fairleigh Dickinson University. We are a uh, medium-sized private institution in the state of New Jersey. We have two campuses. We have our Metropolitan Campus, which is located in Teaneck, New Jersey, about six miles from New York City. And we also have our Florham Campus in Madison, New Jersey, about 20 miles from New York City. On our two campuses, we have over 100 options in majors and concentrations that are available to our students, and they are a wide variety of different academic subjects. We are a medium-sized school, but we like to say that we run like a small institution. We have a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio and our average class sizes are about 20 to 25 students per class. And as you go along further into your academic career, the class sizes do get smaller. We have about 146 active student organizations across our two campuses, and those can include Greek life, academic organizations, pre-professional clubs, sports clubs, interest clubs, so just anything you can think of. But if there doesn't, if it doesn't exist, you're more than welcome to um, petition to start a new organization with some of your friends. Another academic advantage we have at FDU is our 43 different academic programs that allow for students to earn not just their bachelor's but their master's degree in five academic years. This is called our Combined Degree Advantage Program. It is not something you have to declare as an incoming freshman, but it's something that you can choose to um, sign on for during your sophomore or junior year. FDU does uh, try to make it your education as affordable as possible through our merit-based scholarship awards awarded at admissions and our generous financial aid packages. A little bit about our two campuses. Our Metropolitan Campus does house our Division I athletics where we have 21 different athletic teams um, and incoming we have our men's volleyball and women's lacrosse that are about to be introduced in the next academic school year. Um, we have a little over 3,000 undergraduate students at our Metropolitan Campus along with a little over 1,700 graduate students. Um, majority of our graduate programs are housed on the Metropolitan Campus or online, but um, we still have those pro some programs available on both campuses. Both of our campuses allow for residence life, so if you're interested in living on campus, that is something that you can do, and especially if you're coming from the California area, I think you're probably going to need a residence hall to live in. Um, our, Ma our Madison campus, the Florham, uh, is home to our Division three athletics and they are soon to be introducing division three track and field so it will be 20 uh, division three athletic teams there. It is important that if you are an athlete and interested in coming to FDU you do look to see if your team is on our camp which campus because you can only play for the campus that you are studying at. So that is a very important detail. Um, our School of Pharmacy is also located on our Madison campus, which is nice. So students can study the undergraduate portion on either campus, but they will take their doctoral classes on our Florham campus. Just a little bit about the Metropolitan Campus. It actually sits in two cities, the city of Teaneck and the city of Hackensack, and the campus is split by the Hackensack River. Um, makes for a nice uh, place to walk or also a place to hang out on our footbridge um, that has seating areas and electricity. So if you need to plug in your laptop while you're sitting, you can definitely do that. It is important to note that some of our academic programs are not available on both campuses. So our Metropolitan Campus houses our engineering and engineering technologies programs, along with our criminal justice and our marine biologies program. Our Florham campus, um, it used to be the property of the Vanderbilt Trombley family, so it does have some historic value. Um, what you're looking at now is the, the mansion or Hennessy Hall. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful building, but it houses now academics, um, some of our administration building and some event space. Uh, also fun fact, it is where a lot of movies and TV shows have been filmed. Um, if you watch the Chicago Trial of Seven, the then you might have noticed that the mansion was in that movie, that film on Netflix. Um, 
with this campus, we are, our School of the Arts is located here. So any student that has an interest in theater, creative writing, um, film, animation, you would be housed here. But all of our other academic programs are shared within our nine colleges and schools along both campuses. Internships, of course, are very important and some of them are going to be built into the academic programs that you're choosing. Um, some will be for credit, uh, mentoring and networking opportunities are also available through our career development office and through the liaisons within your academic departments. Study abroad is also a very big deal for us. And we just got an email today that says that we are hoping to open up study abroad for the next academic school year. They've opened up applications for our students to apply for fall um, study abroad programs. We have two international campuses, one in Roxton, England, about 70 miles from London and another in the downtown Vancouver, Canada area. Admissions to FDU is very simple. We are part of the common application and we have our own application that's housed on our website. We do, um, we are test optional, so students just need to submit their high school application, their high school transcripts, um, and potentially if you have SAT or ACT scores, you're more than welcome to submit them. Right now, we only have two academic programs that still require them, but all the others are SAT or ACT optional. Um, we're rolling admissions, you can apply at any time, but I always recommend by December 1st for high school seniors because that is how you can maximize your scholarship consideration and also be awarded our FDU priority grant. So apply early, you get additional money. Um, you do not have to apply separately for our scholarships with FDU. It will be a part of your application process and we will review you for that. Again, my name is Megan Troy, I'm your admissions counselor. I will put my information in the chat. Thank you so much and hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you, Megan. Our next presenter is going to be from New Jersey Institute of Technology. Hi, everyone. Give me one second. Just going to share my screen. There we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Joanna Marmello. I am one of the admissions recruiters here at NJIT. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to get to know this university as well as others. Um, so let's get started. So just to talk a little bit briefly about what NJIT looks like in general. Um, so we were founded back in 1881 as, a new, as our Newark Technical School, mostly based on our engineering program. Since then, we have definitely grown. Uh, we now have six different colleges to choose from. Uh, we have our School of Management, College of Computing, College of Engineering, College of Architecture and Design. Um, we also have our uh, College of Science and Liberal Arts, as well as our Honors College. Um, we do offer over 125 different programs amongst all these different schools. Um, they range from computer science, forensic science, um, cyber psychology, uh, applied physics, architecture, digital design. Um, these are just some of the uh, few of the programs that we have to offer. Um, we also put a huge emphasis on our research. We are a research one classified university, which means that we have the highest level of research university can offer. There are only one, um, we are one of three in New Jersey, as well as one of about 130 uh, nationwide. So we're really proud of that. Um, and with that, we have over 115 different research centers and specialized labs for our students to use. Um, we are considered a medium-sized school. Um, however, we try to keep the students to faculty ratio as small as possible. Right now, we're at a 17 to one, with the average class size being about 25 students. Um, last fall, we enrolled about 8,500 undergraduate students and about 2,800 graduate students. Um, these are just some of our rankings. I won't go through all of them, but I will um, point out the uh, number one nationally for student up, uh, upward economic mobility, as I think that one's a really important one to feature. Um, we were ranked with this ranking simply because um, we are really pushing our students to, to break these economic barriers. Um, it is something that we're really proud of and making sure that our students will um, get the most out of their education and the value of what we can provide to our students is unmatched. Our location is in Newark, New Jersey. Um, we are kind of in this very growing hub um, right by New York City, about 10, uh, 10 minutes away from New York. Um, we have a great location in terms of what we have going on right here in the city. Um, whether there's a bunch of eateries like Whole Foods or also just Newark has just so many great places to eat, as well as um, NJ Pack or the Prudential Center or Branchburg Park for entertainment purposes off of campus. Um, we are also uh, within Newark, 
have been seeing a huge influx of major companies moving in from New York into Newark um, because it's a much uh, cheaper place to kind of own a business and run it. So we're seeing a really huge an increase in, in companies coming in and wanting to work with our students, whether it's through an internship or a full-time job after they're finished. We're also super close to the airport. So if you are looking to maybe study abroad or you're from out of state, or maybe you just want to get away for a weekend, um, we're about 20 minutes from the airport, which is awesome for our students who, who need that. Um, of course, you know, having fun outside of campus and being able to have a, a very rich um, campus life is important to us as well. Um, if you would like to live on campus, we do have six different residence halls on campus. Um, it's a very diverse group of students um, that, you know, are running these um, through RA programs, really making sure that our students are staying engaged. And outside of the residence halls, we do have 140 different clubs and organizations for our students to use um, and be a part of, as well as 23 different um, fraternities and sororities to choose from. By no means are we a go Greek or go home university, but if you're looking for a place to really uh, you know, get a great network of uh, brothers and sisters, um, as well as just you know grow on your leadership skills, I'd highly recommend one of those. And just in general, um, getting involved is super important, whether that's through um, an academic club or more of an identity-based one. We have 19 different Division I athletic sports here at NJIT. Um, in the bottom corner of your screen, you'll see our brand new soccer field as well as our wellness events center. Um, those are all open to our students to use as well, regardless of whether they are an athlete, um, but uh, we do have those offerings as well. And um, we also have club sports and intramural sports if division one is a little just too competitive for you, which is totally understandable. Um, just to talk about our tuition breakdown. So if you're an in-state student, you're gonna be um, paying about 17,600. For out-of-state students, it's going to be 33300 And if you decide to live on campus, we're going to round it up to another 13000 Those numbers can look a little bit scary, but I will say about 80% of our students are receiving financial aid, whether that's through need-based or merit-based. Um, if you are a junior and you've never heard of the FAFSA yet, please, when it comes time to filling it out, um, to take the time to fill it out, it's super important, probably one of the most important steps of the college application process. If you're a senior and you haven't filled out your FAFSA, please do so um, just so you can see what you can get from the government in terms of help. All of our merit-based scholarships are, are based on um, your, your high school GPAs. Um, we are test optional for fall 21 through fall 22. So we will not be taking into consideration your uh, SAT or ACT test scores when uh, looking at merit scholarships. Um, we are constantly being asked again by these big New York companies, as well as companies in um, Newark and Jersey City and Hoboken, which are other two major cities near us, um, for our students, simply because they are well educated and really understand um, the industry and where it's growing. So these are just some of the few um, companies we work with. Uh, if you want to learn more about our university, stay connected, visit us. We are doing on-campus visits as well. These, this is just some of our uh, contact information. I'll definitely provide all of this in the chat afterwards. If anyone has any questions about NJIT, please uh, feel free to shoot me a QA. and a Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Our next up, um, our panelist next up is going to be from Ryder University. And I do want to make a quick plug um, that if you have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A feature for our panelists. Um, Susan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, let's just get me started and we should be good. Hold on. Ah, oh, come on today. There we go, wonderful. Well, welcome and thank you so much for having us today. My name is Susan Mikowski. I'm the Director of Undergraduate and Transfer Admission at Ryder University. And I'd love to share a little bit more about Ryder with you. So Ryder is a small private liberal arts school in central New Jersey. Um, we are home to just around 3,800 undergraduate students um, in a residential community atmosphere. Um, so we are in the center of the state. We are 15 minutes from downtown Princeton. We are 15 minutes from the New Jersey State Capitol. We're an hour outside of New York City and we are 45 minutes to Philadelphia. So we are literally in the heart of it all. Um, we are in a very nice little community neighborhood um, and housing is guaranteed all four years for our students. Our students are coming from a wide range of states and countries, as you can see. So you are going to be with students from all different backgrounds, walks of life, um, different experiences that they can expose you to um, as you get to know them both in the classroom um, and in your residence halls. 
at the university, you are a name and a face. Um, you are well known. Um, we pride ourselves on getting to know our students and um, being a very student-centered atmosphere because we believe that's what helps them to be successful while they're with us and beyond. So our average class size is around 21 and the student to teacher ratio is about 10 to one. Um, you are taught by um, our faculty who 94% of which have their PhD or their highest degree possible. We do not use teaching assistants and we do not use graduate assistants. So you really are taught by the experts and they're the ones helping you with those connections to internships, co-ops, field placement, research, um, and then of course um, your job opportunities or grad school opportunities when you are finished. Uh, we are offering on-campus tours, um, so if you are interested in visiting campus, you can certainly do so. If you are curious about how to get to the institution, um, we do. Uh, we are close to Newark International Airport. Um, there is a train station that will run close to the campus here. We are uh, about 15 minutes from three major train stations, 15 minutes from three major hospitals. Um, so lots of easy access in and around the area. And we're probably one of the last schools in New Jersey that allow freshmen to have cars on campus. So if that makes or breaks a decision, um, feel free to know that you may certainly um, have a vehicle on campus. And as I mentioned, again, housing is guaranteed all four years for our students. We offer about 70 plus majors of study at the institution. We were founded as a school of business in 1865. So our Norm Brodsky College of Business is AACSB accredited for both business and accounting, which is quite rare. And only about 3% of institutions internationally can boast that accreditation, that dual accreditation. So you'll see there's quite a bit of offerings under business. We also have the highest accreditation you can have for a College of Education and Human Services. So if you're looking to teach, we can help you with elementary, secondary, middle school, special ed, early childhood, ESL, bilingual, um, or business education. Our liberal arts and sciences um, has everything from our physical sciences to our amazing communications and journalism programs to things such as the new cybersecurity and computer science, um, political science because of our location, it tends to be very popular with our students. And then of course, there's our Westminster College of the Arts home to our School of Fine and Performing Arts for programs like our uh, BFA in Musical Theater or our BFA in Acting or our Dance Science major to our Westminster Choir College, which is its own um, choral school of music, the only one of its kind in the country. Um, and it's a conservatory type setting for piano, organ, voice, music education. So a lot of great opportunities to consider. All of our students in all of these majors must participate in some form of internship, field experience, research, something with their major in order to graduate. They are not allowed to graduate until they prove that they have participated in something outside of the classroom with their major. As far as applying to the institution, um, we are a flexible institution. So we are on the common application and we have a rider application. Um, we have a rolling um, admission process, but we do offer early action. We have a full tuition scholarship that does require you to apply by our early action deadline of November 15th. And we have a single application deadline for our musical theater and acting BFA majors. Other than that, all other programs, you can certainly apply to the institution at any point um, during your senior year. Um, and as you'll see, we have some preferred deadlines for when scholarship would be available, um, but you are considered for scholarship at the time that you are considered to the institution academically. As far as consideration um, of what our average student looks like, the average GPA of a student at the institution is about a 3.4 on a 4.0 grading scale. We are test optional as many schools are, but we've been test optional for many, many years. So we're quite comfortable in evaluating students academically as well as for um, merit-based scholarship. So this will not be a change. We will remain test optional moving forward for many, many years to come. Feel free if you do submit test scores to um, submit everything as we do super score for those students that are going to submit an SAT or an ACT. Um, but your test scores are not required for admission, nor are they required for consideration to the honors program or our full tuition scholarship. The one new thing at Ryder is our Lifting Barriers Initiative. As you can see, it reduced our tuition by 22%, opening up access to a private school education to all students. There's a lot of other uh, benefits that went with this, so I, I encourage you to go online and review that. 
as well as our scholarship opportunities. I encourage you to review those online and please don't hesitate to stay in contact with us. I will also put my contact information in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Our next panelist is gonna be from Binghampton University. Hi everyone, just give me a moment while I bring up my presentation here. Okay, so welcome everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Stephanie Swim. I work in undergraduate enrollment management at Binghamton University. Binghamton is uh, a public school. We are one of 64 public schools located in New York. So we are part of the largest university public system in the country. Uh, what's great about Binghamton is we are the number one academically. So we have been dubbed many names, um, including kind of the public Ivy of the Northeast, the number one New York public university, the SUNY Ivy. So we're really proud of that. And it's really just based on a lot of different factors, including our the placement of our students, the outcomes of our students, certainly uh, our resources on campus, our research, um, the retention, our selectivity, all of those things go into how we've been given all these wonderful accolades. Uh, Binghamton is in located in, in New York. We're a small city in New York, Binghamton. Uh, it is a great location. We're very centrally located. We're three hours from the city, three hours from Philly, five hours from Boston and DC. So we're in a really great spot um, in terms of accessibility, both for uh, students and, and families, of course, but also recruiters and uh, different uh, different folks from organizations and, and companies that want to have access to our students because we're very, very highly recruited. Okay, so just some quick statistics about Binghamton. We're a mid-sized school for in comparison to the other uh, public schools in New, in New York. Uh, so we have about 14,000 undergraduates, only about 7,000 live on campus. So it seems much smaller once you're here on campus. It, it's very felt that it's it's not this, this large school that has all the all of those undergraduate students housed there. Uh, we always like to talk about our retention rate. We have a 92% retention rate, which is pretty phenomenal. We like to brag about that. It really just means that students stay at Binghamton. Um, they're happy with their choice and it's a great place to land for them for four years. And note our, our transfer student retention rate as well is very high. So we are one university, but like many other universities and colleges, we're comprised of intra-schools, and, and we have six of them here at Binghamton. First and for not first and for firstly, we have our Harper College of Arts and Sciences, which is by far our largest school. It's what Binghamton started out as. It's it's quite the range in terms of uh, majors and programs to choose from. Here you have our fine arts, our performance arts, our languages, as well as our biological sciences, natural sciences, uh, our environmental sciences and um, our, our pre-health tracks, so pre-med, pre-vet, pre-dental, as well as pre-law, which are really popular tracks at Binghamton. We have our, our College of Community and Public Affairs, our CCPA. This is for students interested in human development and social work. Our College of Nursing, our Decker College of Nursing is a direct entry nursing program. It's one of the most competitive in the country, certainly the Northeast now. And it is great because it's direct entry, so students don't have that additional application process uh, to endure after their entry to Binghamton into that school. Our School of Management is uh, comprised of two programs, Business Admin with eight different concentrations to choose from, from finance to marketing to entrepreneurship to info systems, as well as accounting. Uh, we are the number one recruited uh, school for accounting majors in the country and in the Northeast, uh, very highly recruited students in the SOM, as we like to call it, uh, sign on the dotted line, oftentimes their junior, junior year. Um, so it, it's, it's a really great program and programs to enter. We also have our Watson School of Engineering. This is offers five different engineering programs as well as computer science, which is really popular at Binghamton. And then we have our School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, and this is strictly a PharmD program. So we have an early acceptance program for students interested in pursuing their PharmD at Binghamton, where they would be housed in Harper initially under a pre-pharmacy track. So Binghamton 
has because we're so inclined to academically and our students are, are such high quality and academically we offer a lot of research honors programs uh, the fri program is one of four in the country and the only one offered in the northeast this is a stem based program uh, it's for students um, that want to start research right away it's it's pretty phenomenal program to get inducted into and um, students often if it's binghamton is not their first choice if they're invited into this program oftentimes we become their first choice so it, it's pretty phenomenal the source project is the same thing it's a, a, a research program but it's for st students interested in the the humanities and the social sciences we also have our pwc program this is for our business students and this is kind of an experiential program so students get to attend different speaker series in different major metropolitan areas workshops they do a 10-day international uh trip where they meet foreign business leaders all around the country or all around the world i should say i'm sorry so it, it's it's a pretty phenomenal experience and then we have our scholars program, which is strictly a quantitative measure of the top one to 2% of applicants. And it has some nice perks attached to that. We have what we call the Binghamton Impact. It's kind of a culmination of these four impact experiences that you can uh, take advantage of when you come to Binghamton. We are an R1 research institute. So we research is pretty much uh, a common theme here at Binghamton. Most students are gonna be doing research here. All of our faculty are PhDs and have the, are, have the highest degree in their field. They're PhDs and they're very active in research. So our students are great um, to help out with that. So research is uh, a big deal at Binghamton. We also have internships. Again, as I mentioned, we're very highly recruited. We have internship fairs throughout each semester many times, um, sometimes specified by different schools. Uh, oftentimes our business students internships are built into their program and it's a great experience to do that at Binghamton. Just moving on, I'm always wordy. We are the among the top 25 healthiest and safest colleges in the country. You can learn more about that on our website. And just some, um, some statistics on our tuition. We are uh, a great value. Our students have a great return on investment and we make, uh, we make the undergraduate experience very affordable with our merit scholarships and half of our students graduate with little to no debt. So please reach out. I'll put my contact information in the chat and thank you for listening today. Thank you, Steph. Um, we're gonna move on to our next panelist from Dominican College. I can learn to understand you much better if I can get oh. familiar with the way you talk. I Excuse me. Sorry about that. <laughs> So hi everyone, thanks so much for joining today. My name is Emma Fortunato and the Assistant Director of Freshman Admissions at Dominican College. So let's jump right in. Um, Dominican College is located right outside New York City. We are in Orangeburg, New York, it's right over the bridge. So we have a lot of students go in and out for internships and just fun activities. We have a 15 to one student faculty ratio since we are only about 2000 students on campus. And that gives us the ability to also have an average class size of about 20 students. 100% of our first time full time freshmen do receive financial aid and we do have a 64 acre campus, but we'll get touch upon a lot of this later in the presentation. So here's a list of all of our undergraduate majors. We have everything from accounting to psychology, the social sciences, teacher education and nursing. A lot of these programs also have concentrations involved with them. So business management has finance, marketing, international business, sports management, and students are allowed to explore. We are a liberal arts college. So if you're not quite sure what you wanna do yet, that's okay, we'll help you get there. A lot of these programs also do have graduate programs with them. For example, we have a bunch of MSEDs, MBAs. We also have a doctorate in nursing and physical therapy. So it's a really great opportunity to be able to do your whole education at one place, which is something a lot of students look for. Outside the classroom, we also enjoy getting our students into internships. Some programs do require clinical hours or internships, such as our nursing program, um, but some just do it for credit or just want to do it to get that experience, and we're here to help you for that. So we are so close to New York City. We have a lot of internship opportunities there as well, but we'll also help you find internship opportunities by over at home, um, by campus if you wanna stay near campus. And also we're right near New Jersey, which has a lot of Fortune 500 companies in Bergen County. So our Career Development Center would love to see you from day one. They wanna help you develop your resume, do mock interviews with you, and make sure you are in the best position possible to get that internship, get that job after college, whatever it is you are looking for in your career goals. 
We also want you to have fun while you're on campus. We are a very community-based school. We call ourselves the Dominican College family. So we want you to be part of that however you wanna be. So we have clubs such as our Verbal Asylum Club, which is our Poetry Slam Club. We have five different dance teams on campus. We have most majors with clubs attached to them, excuse me. And we also do a lot of community service on campus. So we have a Habitat for Humanity chapter. We do Meals on Wheels. We deliver food to seniors and the homeless in New York City as well. If there's a club that you wanna start that maybe you don't see, it's super easy. All you have to do is just get four friends and find someone to advise the club, faculty member or, or administration, and you're pretty much good to go. Um, so, it's easy to join the community and just kind of be part of the family, as I said before. We are division two in all of our athletics, which I think is great because it's opportunity for scholarship and there's a balance with education as well. Um, so our newest teams are the tennis teams and we have a brand new JV baseball team. So it's super easy to kind of start this process as well. All you really have to do is go on chargerathletics.com and get in contact with our coaches. Each coach has their own separate email. So you can reach out, send them stats, send them videos, um, just kind of get that process rolling. It also has rosters, so you can look at what positions might be opening up in the next couple of years and kind of just get a feel for where we are. Our coaches are really responsive and they want to make sure that you have the best um, opportunity possible as well. So our application process, we do offer rolling admissions. Um, we work with everyone on a case by case basis. So always feel free to keep in contact with us, but we are on the common application or you can apply through our website. It's only about a 15, 20 minute application. We try to stay as, as straightforward as possible. Um, really, we only need your transcript to complete your application. We are test optional and have been test optional for a few years. So that's certainly not something that's gonna change. Um, once we get your transcript, we can review you for a decision. Um, letters of recommendation and essays are encouraged. They're not required. As I've been mentioning, we're very community based. So we'd love to get to know how your community views you. But if you want to get that application out of the way in September and your letters and essays aren't quite ready yet, that's okay. We can still work with you from there. Um, our average accepted student has about a 3.0 GPA. Um, if you want to submit test scores, the average SAT is between 1050 1100. And our average ACT is about a 22. So feel free to send them in and kind of get a feel for where you think your test scores and grades are and we'll work with you. Um, and once everything's in, we can usually give our students a decision within a week. So always feel free to keep in contact with us. In terms of room and board, if you're going to live on campus, it's about $43,000 for the year. That's before any scholarship or a sticker price. Like I said, all students, um, incoming freshmen that are full time are offered scholarship or some form of financial aid. We automatically offer all students scholarship upon acceptance. So it's great in terms of you'll find out you're accepted and you'll find out how much scholarship you are qualifying for. We encourage all of our students to complete the FAFSA because we also work with every family on a, on a person by person basis. We know that everyone's in their own financial situation and we wanna respect that and make sure that Dominican College is affordable for every family. So feel free to reach out through for help through the FAFSA process, help with the award letter, anything that you might need. We're here for you to make sure it all works. We are offering a virtual open house coming up on May 1st, and that's where a good opportunity to come see a virtual tour of campus and learn more about majors, stuff like that. I'll be there, come say hi. And this is just my contact information. I'll put it in the chat or the Q&A, but feel free to catch up with us on social media as well. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Emma. Um, our last school to present is gonna be Hartwick College. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, my name is Shayna Popo. I am a Senior Assistant Director for Admissions at Hartwick College and I'm also an alumni. Graduated right in 2017. It does feel like forever ago now though. Um, so with Hartwick College, we are nestled on a hill in Oneonta, New York, which is kind of as crazy as it seems, the very center of New York State. And we have a vibrant campus community that really fosters belonging. Here you get to find your place and really your people. And with our beautiful location and the vibrant living spaces, it's easy to feel at home on our campus that's made for connections. And as a hawk, you really get to discover that getting involved is easy as we have 60 plus clubs. And I think it's 19 division three sports for men's and women's. And making friends comes very naturally as you'll see our connections are simple. And um, everyone here is really just rooting for your success, whether it's alumni, staff, and especially your faculty. So 
I am just going to share my screen, hopefully properly. And then I am gonna share probably my video that we have on our YouTube channel. This is Hartwick College. And great news, you're going to be one of us in August. So I bet you're wondering what it's like to be a student here. Well, it can be a lot of things. Like one night, you might head to your RA's program, grab a slice of free pizza, and play awesome games with your new friends. You could stay after to talk to your RA about choosing housing for next year and picking a roommate. Or maybe one day you'll have a super big chem test to study for, and you'll stay up super late to study for it. But then, on your way to class, you stumble across the massage chair set up on Dewar Balcony. Ah, perfect. The student-run Hartwick Campus Activities Board puts on free events like this all the time. And if you show up to Bingo, a Hartwick favorite, you might be lucky enough to win the biggest thing of cheese balls you've ever seen. Some of us come from big cities with lots of people, and some from small towns where a lot of people look a lot alike. Hartwick is a place with all kinds of people, and plenty of ways to get to know each other better. Like Carnival, a celebration of the diversity of humanity, or Safe Zone Training, where you can learn about LGBTQ issues and how to be a better ally. Or the Women's Center, or HIA, the Hartwick Identity Alliance. There are so many events and activities open to the whole campus, and you don't have to go looking for them. Text messages and announcements will be coming your way. After enjoying some of Hartwick's world-famous chicken nuggets one day, you might want to grab your roommate and check out the different Greek organizations on campus. Hartwick sororities and fraternities become friends and family and they make their mark on the community, volunteering at the food shelter, raising money for St. Jude's Hospital, and helping in the nearby animal shelter. They also organize blood drives, service projects, and social events that everyone seems to love. Students here also love the outdoors. Our 425-acre campus rises up Oyarin Hill for a 30-mile view across the Susquehanna Valley. You can take the free shuttle out to Pine Lake, check out the environmental campus, and go canoeing or kayaking. If you can't get enough, you can live there in the cabins, close to the lake and hiking trails, plus a climbing wall and high ropes course. It's only 15 minutes away from our main campus, but it feels like a whole other world. And if you want to give back, we have that too. To connect with our campus and community needs, check out the student-run Office of Community Involvement and Volunteerism. Yeah, it'll look great on your resume, but volunteering just feels really good. Give more than 200 hours to the community and you'll even get service cords to wear at graduation. On those days that you wake up feeling not so great without so much as a Band-Aid, that's where the Perella Health Center comes in. No car, no problem. It's a quick walk across campus and it's super easy to set up a visit with a counselor or the nurse practitioner. If you have to get off campus for an appointment or to pick up a prescription, Hartwick's Health Squad will give you a ride for free. We've all heard of the Freshman 15, right? Well. If you decide that's not for you, you can hit up the Campbell Fitness Center a few times a week. Our Director of Wellness and her team of student personal trainers are right there if you need them to show you the equipment and give you insider tips. If you're up for it, sign up for a free spin class one week and a Zumba class and an HIIT course the next week. After a great workout, you might just be in the mood for an iced caramel macchiato at John Christopher's Cafe, just across Frisbee Field. One day, you'll probably have just one of those days. You know, where you accidentally lock your keys and ID card in your room. But then, lucky for you, campus safety is around 24-7 to let you back in after classes are out. Officers can even offer you an escort if you ever feel uncomfortable. It's good to know they're always there for you, walking campus and responding when needed. Just making sure we're all safe. So, whether you're the type of student who does great in a big study group, or the type who likes to study on your own, Hartwick has the environment to support you. And all of this is just a little of what it's like to be a student at Hartwick. So thank you so much for joining me at that. I can do this. Oops. This is light. Sorry. So 
your flight path. <laughs> With our distinctive offer flight path, you will receive a dedicated guidance team as well. So you, with a future focused education, personal in mentorship and immersive career opportunities. What makes flight path so special is the gain of real world work experience early and often. I mean, as soon as freshman year fall semester begins. So, and that's just the way to really build on your confidence and we will help you document your progress in a digital resume and prepare you for the meaningful career after graduation and even after graduation you're welcome to come back as we are always going to be here for you as we are a massive hawk family. Um, and then I will include my contact information in the comments below so if you have any sort of questions about academics and anything about our 275 flight path programs, by all means you're always welcome. Welcome to reach out to me and thank you so much for your time today. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So folks, we are nearing the end of our presentation and we're going to switch over into a quick Q&A session. So I'd love to um, welcome back all of our panelists again. Um, and I'm going to start off with Fairling Dickinson University and ask, what advice would you give a student going through the uh, college search process? Um, I think now that a lot of our campuses are opening back up a bit and allowing students to come and visit, if you have an opportunity to come and visit our campuses, sometimes I think it's the best way to figure out if a, a school is right for you. If you can physically see what it looks like, how you feel in the community, I think that is something that helps a lot of students. I know it helped me during my college process. Awesome. Thank you, Megan. Next up, we have uh, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Thank you. Um, I think for me, one of the biggest pieces of advice along with visiting a campus um, would be getting to know your admissions counselor. Um, they're a great resource and it's, it's really good to, to put names to applications and really see your personality. Um, so, you know, as much as you can get to know your counselor, I think that's that will be a great start for you. Great. Thank you, Joanna. Next up, we have Ryder University. Thank you. I could not agree more with FDU and NJIT. Ditto on both. I think my piece of advice um, adds to what you're doing today, which is exploring multiple college options. So potentially learning about schools that you might not otherwise have heard of um, and not being, um, and being more open to all the possibilities that are out there. So finding that diamond in the rough school that's gonna fit you best um, by being open to different school colors or a different mascot than you thought you might want to, um, and just being open to all the opportunities that could be available to you at any of the schools that you're searching for. Awesome, thank you, Susan. Next up, we have Minghampton University. So oh, I, I want, I'm going to echo what every other panelist has said thus far. Um, yeah, take advantage. Go to, go to college fairs, try to visit campus, and reach out to your admissions counselor. Schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Really kind of get down um, and, and, and go in depth in, in your research and, and, and make yourself take advantage of the resources on, on these college and university websites. Um, I'm going to share our visit page where you can schedule appointments um, in the chat. So you can do that for, for us at here at Binghamton. But definitely take advantage, do your due diligence, and um, get all the information you can before making that important decision. Thank you, Steph. Um, is there anything that else that you would like to add from Dominican College? Yeah, so I definitely want to echo what everyone's saying. It's a lot of great advice. And I just want to say, don't be afraid to be yourself. Um, I think there's this stereotype that the perfect student that colleges and universities are looking for, but we're looking for you and we're looking to know who you are as a person. So be yourself, keep in touch with us and yeah, visit the campuses. Absolutely, thank you, Emma. Um, and then we'll wrap this up with Hartwick College. Add on to the wonderful advice, don't forget to breathe. A lot of us are rolling admissions now. So if you're doing your applications early, give yourself time to really focus and take each step that you need to. Don't feel pressured. Take that second to breathe and definitely let us help. Don't forget to save our numbers. Awesome, thank you, Shane. Um, we're gonna move on into one question and we're gonna do it a little bit in a speed round, um, but I would love to hear about this and I'm sure our audience would as well about your favorite um, event or tradition on campus. And we'll go in the same order. So I'll welcome back Fairling Dickinson University. 
Um, I'll be quick. We host a Broadway bound series every semester. So I can't wait for Broadway to open back up. But for 20 or $25, our students can go and see a Broadway show in New York City. Even if it's not something you think you're interested in, everyone should at least go to one show. Lion King is my favorite. I've seen it like four times. Wow, Megan, that is a steal. Um, thank you for sharing that. Next up, we have New Jersey Institute of Technology. Um, I'll also make it quick. Every semester at the beginning of uh, classes, our president actually comes down and has an entire pancake making event for our students where he likes to get to know our students a little bit more but while making them pancakes and, and giving them a good meal. Thank you, Joanna. Next up, we have Ryder University. Um, we Mine is probably our screen screen. We host the largest inflatable um, outdoor drive-in movie at Halloween on campus, and you don't know the movie until the night of. And I usually don't do the drive-in, but I sit in my office and I can still see the movie and I can still hear the all of a sudden the screams from um, the scary movie. So that to me is one of our, our favorite traditions. Awesome. Thank you, Susan. Next up, we have Binghamton University. Okay, so uh, every fall and spring, we have something called UFAST, which uh, highlights our 450 clubs and organizations on campus. It's a booting event, so all the reps from each club are there and students are able to peruse the different booths and see which ones um, they're interested in. It's like a carnival, there's different vendors, and it's really fun. And we have a cheese club and a ninja club, and there's a lot of fun clubs to kind of check out, so. Awesome, thank you, Steph. Um, Dominican College. My favorite event is Family Day and Fire in the Sky. It's just a few weeks after the beginning of classes. Your family gets to come back. We give you a wonderful lunch. And then we have a carnival on our quad all throughout the day. And we end the night with a fireworks display. Super fun. Thanks, Emma. And then we'll wrap this up with Hartwick College. So for me, it's definitely our O-Fest. It's a massive concert festival that we do every single spring. And everybody from all over the state comes to visit because it's a free concert with at least a B or artist or higher. And it's somebody that the students get to physically vote on. I love it every year. Super neat. Um, well, folks, that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, and I do wanna say thank you to our panelists for being here and just sharing all the fantastic things about their institutions. Um, in our audience for really exploring the, the options that you have um, going forward. And all the, along with those closing thoughts, I just wanna say that once you close this window, there's gonna be a very quick four question survey that we would appreciate any feedback that you could provide. As I mentioned at the beginning, there are more sessions, so be sure to sign up for more. Um, and in about a week, you can find the same recording at stripescan.com backslash SD, uh, SSDA. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a great evening.